All right. Hello, everyone. Oh, I am super excited and I hope that you are. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about who I am. First of all, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Angeline Robinson. I hail from Mar Maryland, but I currently reside in Texas. I've been out here for about eight years. I've been a consultant for five years. I sit on the board of directors. I hold the senior executive director title and my team just hit a million dollars. I am the leader of Team Zealous Zebras. And this topic, what we're gonna be going over today in this class, I'm very, very passionate about. So I'm excited to share with you. Make sure that you get your pen and your paper. And listen, I know that we have the luxury of being at home and doing these trainings on Zoom, right? And so there's always distractions and things like that, especially if you're a mom, like I'm a mom, I have five kids. So make sure that, you know, if you have someone that can support you and just kind of, you know, take the kids or allow you to go into a room and have this hour to yourself, it's going to be very, very beneficial. All right. So let's go ahead and get started and talk about what we're going to be sharing today. So in this class, you're going to learn three important tools a leader can possess, right? You're here for a reason. So we're going to get you on track. Strategies in selecting a team name, which I feel are very, very important. So we'll go over that as well. Uh, how to create team culture and core values. That is something I'm very, very passionate about as well. And then there are ways to identify leader potential. Because even as a leader, you're, listen, you're only as good as your team and your leaders that are around you. So you're definitely gonna need help. And then how to improve retention. We all want that, right? Even corporate wants that. And some things you can help, some things you can. And so we're gonna go over what those things are as well. So it's gonna be great. Get ready, go on a ride. <laughs> so strong leadership. It starts with having heart to serve. And, you know, some people, you know, we have had leaders over the years that maybe necessarily didn't lead in that manner. Uh, but in the times that we live in, very, very important to have that heart to actually lead with love. So definitely want to make sure that we touch on that as well. And you don't have to necessarily be the warm and fuzzy person to have a heart to serve, right? I mean, our mission is to do what? Empower, educate, and entertain, right? So we should have that already. All right, so leading strong, that's the name of this class. And it all starts with you, all right? So the fact that you're here today means that you are ready to grab those tools that are gonna help you to become a better leader or for some of you just to become a leader, period, right? You all, somebody may be in this class that you know is looking to actually build an empire. So we're gonna reflect on you know, your own thoughts of leadership and add some valuable ideas as well to your repertoire. Oh, you ask yourself, where do I start? <laughs> Super important to know that, right? So the most important uh, thing that a leader can possess. Now, I've talked about this before, and you guys may have heard this. These tools are the same three things that I recommend to consultants that don't even have teams, right? Or don't have large teams. And that is, you know, you remember that song, you're down with OPP, yeah, you know me. Most of us remember that song, right? It was a pretty popular song. Well, I've kind of coined, you know, this acronym from, CPP. All right. So instead of OPP, it's CPP. And want to know what that stands for? For those of you that don't know, it stands for consistency, passion, and patience. Let's break it down. <laughs> All right. So consistency, anything that you want to succeed in, anything that you want to be better at, that you want to be greater at, that you want to master, is going to require consistency. Because listen, Rome wasn't built in a day. You're not going to be able to make all the things happen overnight and everything's not going to always go your way. So it's going to take a lot of hard work. It's going to take some sacrifice. But if you stay the course, ladies, you're going to reap the benefits. I can assure you. All right. So trust me on that one. Next up, passion. Ooh, that's a good one, right? If you have passion for something, when you hit those valleys, right? Those peaks and valleys, when you have those ebbs and flows, you're not going to be so easily shook and be ready to throw in the towel because you actually are passionate about what it is that you do. And so nothing is going to be able to just knock you off course and make you say, I'm out. All right. So learn to separate your emotions and not take things personally. Now, I'll tell you, this is something that 
was a struggle for me. So I'll definitely share for anybody that is thinking about that. I'm so passionate, not just about pure romance, but about people. And so I'm somebody that leads with my heart and I just want to help everyone. Well, as a leader, you know, you're going to sometimes be that person so close to that person that you want to help that when life gets crazy for them and they're really going through that you might be the person that catches it from them on that one day that they're just mad at the world and you didn't do anything to deserve it. But you might sometimes get some of that from the people that you love. But if you can actually understand that people don't generally have problems in their business, they have problems in their personal life that show up in their business. And so just being able to separate those emotions and not take things personally is going to protect you and take you a long way. All right. Patience. We all need help in that category, I'm sure, right? Got to have patience because like I said, things are not going to just happen for you, you know, just all at one time. And you're going to have to be able to stay the course. Like, you know, we hear Chris all the time say that this is a marathon and not a sprint. And I will say, listen, um, I've been deemed the resolution junkie. So I do like to have things happen like right away right but as you mature and you learn and you train and you educate yourself you learn and understand that you know you're going to have to actually work the system and have some patience you know um yeah everyone wants to have a million dollar team or a multi-million dollar team some people hit it in five years some people hit it in ten some people hit it in three to five right jen kelly so you just don't know but if you put in the work and be willing to do a little hand holding which we'll touch on that a little bit later and I know some of you might be like, hey, wait, hold hand holding. I'm not doing that. Trust me, it's necessary. Or you can also delegate as well. All right, so I wanna talk a little bit about choosing a team name, something that has a meaning that aligns with your vision. And some of you might be saying like, well, what does that have to do with anything, right? Oh, you'd be surprised. It has a lot to do with a lot. <laughs> so selecting a team name that resonates with your members, uh, it, it unites you and it, it helps you to develop team pride and it also breeds loyalty. And that's what you're going to want and need to have that strong foundation, right? And I believe in manifesting. Manifest what you want. So try to choose names with direct meaning and purpose for what you want for your team. All right. So these are going to be key. All right. Very, very important. Um, so when you think about this, some of you, most of you probably already have a team name and maybe you didn't put that much thought into it. Maybe you just chose something that was fun and quirky and all of that. And that's fine. Right. But as you grow as a leader, sometimes your vision changes. Sometimes your purpose changes for yourself and for your team. So you can change it if you decide if it's something that, you know, if we go through this and you say, wow, you know what? I didn't think about that. And, and I do, you know, want to have something different and I want to take my team in a different direction. It's your team. You can do it. I'll give you an example. Um, Dana Barish, who's my sponsor, she's been Diamond Divas for almost 20 years, right? And then she decided she wanted to revamp things with the team and have us all start to work together to make things easier for all of our teams. So she met with her board and they all voted on changing the team name from the Diamond Divas to the Diamond Empire because she was really looking to grow the team even larger than what we already are. And so she had buy-in. So don't just go off and make these decisions on your own. You really wanna get buy-in from your team. That is going to be very, very critical. And so discuss, you know, discuss it with them. Um, my team, we're called the Zealous Zebras. And I did put some real thought into that coming into the business. Um, I, I don't know what, you know, initially drew me to zebra patterns and things like that. Cause I've never been like a, a animal print girl, cheetah, zebra, whatever. This just wasn't my thing, but I was drawn to it. And my husband noticed it and he started buying me all of these things to put in my office that were all zebra, everything, right? He lived on offer up. Totally, totally cool. Um, so I, I was like, why are you buying me all these things? And he's like, well, I noticed that you're kind of drawn to the zebra pattern. And he said, you should explore that he's like you know maybe find out what it is about the zebra that you're drawn to and so i did i looked it up <laughs> i looked up the characteristics of a zebra and everything about the zebra is me i couldn't believe it it was like wow a zebra is loyal they're nurturing they're you know they can survive in harsh lands like they have all of these great strong qualities you know that just really really spoke to my spirit and i've always 
been a very overzealous person, right? And so I just put the two names together and there we are, right? And my team understands and knows what this means, okay? So again, whatever name you have, does it resonate with your team? Does it unite them? Think about sports, right? There's a lot of pride in sports teams, their names, their, their, um, their mascot, even schools, the alma mater, all those things, right? Sororities, fraternities, very important. Does your name develop team pride? Just with those things I talk about. So manifest what you want and choose names again with direct meaning. So I'm going to share something with you really quickly. Um, there was uh, someone uh, in, our, in our sister, one of our sisters in the business, and I won't share a name, but a couple of years ago, I had the honor and the privilege to share within her team page on Facebook. She wanted me to go in, help get the girls excited, and, um, you know, and she just was like, I can't get them to actually do anything, and I really need somebody to help wake them up. So when I went into the team page, it, it was discovered that their team had no name. I was shocked. I mean, this was not a new team. And this person, if she's in this class or she's watching, she knows who she is, right? Totally amazing woman. Um, but they didn't have a name and I didn't understand it. I'm like, that's the issue. Your team has nothing that binds them. They have nothing to, you know, to, to feel excited about and you know, what actually joins them and makes them wanna work together for one common goal. Something as simple as a name. Right? So a name is the greatest connection to one's own identity and individuality. Dale Carnegie said that. And most of us, we know who he is, right? He wrote that book that everybody in pure romance should have read, right? How to Win Friends and Influence People. And so a name is super, super important. And so when I shared that with her, I was like, you've got to have a name. The team needs a name. And I said, and it's okay. They haven't had one all this time, but this is a great opportunity to actually bring them together because now you guys can select a name together. If you have a couple of names you've thought about, put it out there, ask them what they think, and then have everyone vote on it. That's gonna make them feel they're gonna have ownership. They're gonna have ownership of that team. And so she did that, and definitely things started to take off with her team. Something as simple as a name. What's in a name? I mean, I even took thought in naming my children, giving them names that had meaning right? Names give you recognition. Think about the titles that a lot of us want to achieve within this business, right? What does it mean? It, it makes people look at you different. You look at you differently. You get recognized differently. It gives you a sense of purpose and a sense of pride. It gets attention. You know, whatever your name may be, whatever it stands for, the way you spell it, you know, all of those different things really, really surprisingly go a long way. If you've never thought about this, I promise you, if you believe in manifesting and putting things out into the universe, you, you selecting a team name that has purpose and all of those things is going to make a huge difference. All right, so you're like, okay, Angie, I'm with you, I'm down. I'm gonna make sure that I take this name thing seriously. Maybe I'll consider a change. Maybe my name is already on point. Maybe I don't have one and I've got to select one. Well, how the heck do you do that? <laughs> so, all right, well, I Googled. Remember, I thought about it and I Googled what the zebra meant. So this is it. Discover your team's core values. And we're going to touch on that as well. Discover their core values and then do a Google search. You can find a lot of things on Google. I think it's pretty cool, right? So if you're not sure what values, you know, what you represent or what you want your team to represent, look them up. Just Google it, right? See what they represent and then share with your team. Share, 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 right? We always talk about sharing the opportunity. It's super important to share with your team ideas and the vision that you have for them if you want them to align with you. So you've done it. You selected a team name. Now what? <laughs> okay. Well, now it's time to set the tone and the expectations. It's time to manifest those visions and those goals and dreams that you have for yourself, your family, your team, and their family, because that's what we are, right? We're family. So you can manifest these by making it part of your everyday language towards your team. Express what you want, express what you don't want. That also is going to be super important. So if you don't want drama, if you don't want negativity, then speak on it from the very beginning so we've we've all heard people say hey you can't teach an old dog new tricks right so if you don't set the expectation in the beginning then you know you don't want to find yourself being reactive you want to be proactive 
and put out there what you want and what you expect for your team. And of course, do it and reinforce it in a positive manner. Okay, like we're nobody's mom, you know, we can't tell them what to do. Well, some of you may be moms, but you know what I'm saying. We're not moms to our team members. And so we do want to make sure that we're reinforcing with positivity. So um, I'll give you an example also of what I do to really just instill in my team, like the different things that I want and the values, right? So the, this right here, these seven core values are my team's core values. Compassion, gotta have it. Listen, there's so many things that people go through in life every day. And you think about the year that we had last year, oh my gosh, people just, just to survive the year was just enough, right? But for those of us that, you know, like are so driven, we're so motivated about our visions, our dreams, our goals, what it is that we wanna do. And so a lot of times, sometimes we're so, we have tunnel vision and all we're thinking about is our numbers. Um, I wanna have a million dollar team. I wanna recruit these amount of women. I wanna have this amount of sales. And you've gotta make sure that you're not only reaching out to those people when you're looking for them to place an order. You gotta be compassionate. Think about what they might be going through. They might be thinking about how they're gonna pay their electric bill today while you're thinking about if they're gonna place an order. They might be thinking about how they're going to buy groceries to feed their children while we're thinking about, oh, I've got to you know, get my override to be this amount of money this month. So make sure that you're being sensitive to your team members and you're being, you, you have compassion for them. Positivity, oh, listen, that is gonna take you a long way. Stay positive, stay far away from negativity. And that is definitely something that we embody. We're known for positivity. If you guys know the zebras, you know that that's what we're known for. Love, love one another. I think that love just, it conquers everything. You know, you can get through anything with love. You know, when people hurt you, you hurt people, you make mistakes, you do things, we all make them, you know, but we can correct those mistakes and we can begin to love again. So doing that, there are women that come into this business that are broken and they need, you know, they want that sisterhood. They want to feel validated. They want to make someone proud. So just loving someone through their trials and tribulations, it breeds loyalty. And they will become a very, um, you know, just vital part of your team and productive member on your team if you treat them like you care and don't make them a number. Perseverance. Oh, yeah, definitely. Listen, zebras, we what? We survive in harsh lands. Last year, just getting through that year and being able to hit that million. Oh, it's all about perseverance because things are not going to always be going great. It's just not the way it is, right? So when the tough times come, you know, you're gonna be able to persevere, you're gonna overcome those things. Very important. This is another one of our values. Consistency, you hear that word again, consistency, right? From the CPP, gotta be consistent, man. Listen, so many people, they get right to the door of success. Right to the door. Uh, you know, they're right about to open up the door and then hit that goal, hit that milestone. You know how many people quit right at the door? They throw in the towel. They're like, I've been doing all the things. I can't get my team to do this. You know, I can't do that. You know what? I just, this must just not be for me. I'm done. And they don't even realize they're right at the door. If they would have just pressed a little bit further, on the other side of that door was their breakthrough. So you wanna have consistency. Service to others uh, is my mantra. The more people that you help to become successful, the more successful you're gonna become. Listen, if you help enough people get what they want, you're gonna get all the things that you want. So service to others is important. Listen, I, and I'm not saying because I say this and I want to be careful how I say it. Like corporate, they ask me to do anything, I'm doing it, right? And not that you can't say no or that you shouldn't say no, because I know that some of us have to learn to say no, but I just, I really have a heart to serve. And I know that in my serving, it's going to continue to bring me the blessings and continue to bring me success. You know, it's going to continue taking me from, you know, one level to the next level to the next level, just simply by serving others. And I'm talking about beyond your team, 
right? So, so what? That person's not on your team. If they reach out to you for help, why not help them? I've had people join my team because I helped them when they were not on my team, right? So what I mean by that is someone that maybe was inactive for many, many years or someone that um, never came in with a sponsor. They came in under corporate and they were reaching out to me for help and I helped them. And then they asked corporate, could they have a sponsor? And they were allowed to actually come onto my team. Now, if I'd have been like, oh, well, I'm not your sponsor, so you know, um, can't help you, or not really giving them the time, because I don't believe anybody would really say that right here, you know, in our sisterhood. But you know what I mean? Just like because it doesn't benefit you directly in that moment, not giving that person your time. And then passion again, having that passion super duper important, okay? Because when things are not going the way that you want them to go then that passion is going to carry you through. I live, eat, sleep, and breathe pure romance because I'm passionate about it. And I hope that you can feel that. Like, I love what we do every day, every night. It's, it's, it fuels me. Being able to help other women become the best version of themselves, that right there to me means everything. And I absolutely love it. So one of the things that I do, here's an example of what you can do to get buy-in from your team. Um, you know, just constantly putting it out there into the atmosphere. So every Tuesday, we have Team Tuesday, and I go live, same time every Tuesday. And if you think about Chris's rise and grind, right? So every morning, five days a week, same time, you know he's going to be there, and he's going to get you excited about the things of the day and all that, right? Well, I do the same thing, but I do it once a week with my team on Team Tuesday. And so I, I recap the, the, the past week. Uh, I also talk about things that are coming up, the different sales and all the different opportunities that are being afforded us. And that really helps the, the woman that's really, really busy and can't keep up with all the things that we have going on, right? So I give them that in that one hour, I really get them pumped up, excited about it. And you know, this right there, I mean, it, it really helps with our team culture because we have our own team song. You'll always hear me praise my team, tell them how amazing they are and always go over these values and what we represent. I talk to them about how much we're loved as a team. Like I know that corporate really loves how we operate. I know that a lot of our sisters in the business that know us love how we operate. That means something to them. When I share that with them, it gives them a sense of pride. They can, you know, hold their head up high and, and it makes them want to be better because they know that people are watching them and that feels good to know that they're making a difference in somebody else's life. So when you do that, man, like they have that buy-in there. Listen, they don't want to mess up the reputation of the team. You know, they want to live up to that expectation and that's fabulous. All right. So. Now, start out right, keep everything tight. <laughs> Listen, would you build a home without a strong foundation? I mean, really. Now, I'm not a home builder. I'm a team builder, right? I build people. So kind of like the same, the same concept. Now, you think about like, um, I talked about this because, I mean, listen, I don't lay bricks. But I think I'm wise enough to know that if I'm building bricks and I'm using brick and mortar, I can't just stop in the middle of building. I can't, you know, take a break and go off and do something different because otherwise, I mean, this stuff is going to harden and then I can't build on that, right? So that consistency and not stopping, keeping the momentum, when you start building, you need to keep building, keep building because if not, it's going to be harder to get to pick up from where you left off. If this person you see in this image stops what they're doing, and that mortar, it hardens, what's gonna happen when they come back to rebuild? It's gonna be nearly impossible, not impossible, but they're gonna have to tear down some stuff. That stuff's gonna be hard, they're gonna have to break through it. They might have to start over again, and that's not fun, right? So you wanna think about the fact that you need a strong foundation. A team you know, that has a strong foundation, just like a structure, is going to be able to survive the test of time. All right, and I'll tell you what I, what I mean more about that. So the first strong win can cause a lot of damage without a solid foundation. We as leaders must influence, okay, and not dictate. So no matter how awesome, you know, you are as a leader, um, you know, we still have members that will come and go. So this is kind of what I'm touching on in regards to that because, and I'm gonna go back to that so that you can see that slide again. If you um, like I lost a rock star on my team a couple of years ago. It happens. 
right? But if you have a strong foundation, which I did, now the other girls may not have had the huge team that she had, but they still were doing their part. So when I lost her, the whole team didn't fall apart. We didn't have to start over again. We just needed to re-strategize and start to build a little bit faster, a little bit more just to kind of, you know, catch up from, you know, where we kind of lost traction to hit that million dollars, right? And we still hit our goal within the five years. So very important that you learn to identify those key players that will be your foundation. Um, or as I say in slang terms, we call them our ride or dies, right? My ride or dies, those girls that are going to be with me through it all, thick and thin. Those are your foundational team members. And then you have a much more stable team when and if things get rocky, right? So the, the person that I'm talking about, my rock star that I actually lost, <clears throat> life happens, right? She was passionate about this business. She was amazing in this business. Um, she was great. I mean, the team that she built, they were amazing. And then she ended up getting married to someone that didn't support her business anymore. I'm gonna let you sit with that for a moment. Now this person supported her before they got married. And then when they got married, something changed. And he became very possessive and controlling and no longer wanted her. He didn't see anything right with what we did anymore. And she loved this business. And I watched her go through so much hurt and pain trying to keep her marriage together, trying to be a great wife and mother and still hold on to her pure romance business. And eventually she threw in the towel and all of her team members eventually trickled right behind her. It happens, right? So set intentions. This is all about your foundation. Set intentions, purpose, <clears throat> direction. Identify your ride or dies. Learn to strategize together. <clears throat> Influence rather than dictate. Educate yourself on leadership, very important. Read, 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 do it, very important. Download the Audible app if you don't have it, listen to books, all right? So take screenshots also of these images if you want something that you may um, wanna be able to reflect back on, okay? So you're like, okay, Angie, I got you. I need some ride or dies, I need foundational team members, girls that are gonna ride with me, they're gonna be with me, they're gonna rock with me, they're gonna align with me. How do I find these people? <laughs> all right, so. Here are six ways to identify leader potential. Observe their character and work ethic. Give them tasks or responsibilities. See how they handle them, right? See if they want them. Uh, look at those that show a higher level of engagement, who is always willing to lend a helping hand, who always shares ideas, who's always posting something inspirational on the team page who's always doing those things, they're engaged, they're, they attend every training, like who are those people? The ones that know that education never stops, they know that staying a student is vital, right? They show up for every team meeting, every training, every live, love, win, every pure business, every success strategy, every world conference, every national training, everything. Those people, those are your leaders, right? Those that don't need to show off. That's a big one. Listen, I love to be transparent and I will say to you, right? Like I'm that girl, I'm, by the way, I'm 48 years old. I just turned 48 in December. And I'm that girl that dealt with a lot of rejection coming up. So I felt the need for a long, long time to be validated. I love, I listen, I'm a former entertainer. I'm a retired recording artist for those that don't know. I love the limelight, right? I still do, right? But I don't need it like I did before. Everyone wants to be celebrated, right? But I needed it before. But for those that that just, you know, that are in that place and they've not grown out of needing it, the attention and showing off, you know, that sometimes can rub people the wrong way. But great leadership potential, those that don't need that. And I've, listen, Pure Romance has grown me, has matured me and put me in a place to where I don't feel the need to be validated. I don't have to always be seen or be on the forefront, right? That's a great quality to have because you wanna put your, your, your team members in a position to shine. And so those that don't need to show off, those people are gonna leave with love. 
right? All right, also those that bring out the best in others. Oh, gotta share this story, it's so awesome. So um, my team and I had a couple of trainings last year, um, in, the, in the last year, it was leadership trainings and we had, um, Rachel Main to come in and we had Dana McWilliam to come in and really teach us some really great things to go into the new year with. And so one of my girls immediately started to implement it. Very next day, she started doing the things that Rachel taught her, doing the things that Dana taught her. And she sent me screenshots of what she had done. And so she posted it in the chats that we have. And then she asked, um, you know, she was just like, listen, I'm really excited. I did this. And one of my trainers said, hey, would you go live in the team page and show everybody what you've done? And she was like, oh my God, I'm so afraid to go live. That I can't do it. I have this fear. I can't do it. And that trainer, Teresa, shout out, was like, you can do it. You can do it. You know? And then they kind of like had a little sidebar conversation. And the next thing I know, she was going live in the team page and building up others. So Teresa brought out the best in this, you know, emerging leader. And then she went and shared on the team page to help bring it out and everyone else. Those are definitely signs of great leaders, right? All right, so now you've identified them. Now what? Find out what their superpowers are and give them a position to play. Be a coach, very important. So now I also wanna tell you, you wanna remind yourself and remind them that this is a voluntary workforce. You are not their boss. I'm not their boss. They don't work for you, you know, they don't work for me. Now, you do want them to align with your vision and your purpose for the team, and all that comes with trust. Yes? Okay, so, but always, again, remember to be humble and know that they don't have to do anything. But if they trust you to lead and guide them to also get to the level of success that they want, they're going to do what you ask anyway. But remind yourself of that. So, um, again, gain that trust, get them to align, superpower check in. As a leader, no matter how great you are, you can't do all the things. You're not great at all the things. This lovely PowerPoint presentation is not my thing, right? The content is, but building this, when I was asked to do this, I was like, no, I can't do this. This isn't my thing. And Amy was like, Angie, I know that you have people on your team you can delegate to that love doing this kind of stuff. And I do, right? So I reached out to one of my girls, shout out to Talisha Haynes, that built this lovely PowerPoint for me. And then Amy also came in and tweaked some things. And so that's not my superpower, but I have girls that do have it. And so you delegate and they, they love that because they're actually, you know, they're helping out the team. They're helping out the corporation by being able to step in and help me in an area where I'm weak, right? Um, so find out what they, what they are. You've identified them, you have your ride or dies, Find out what their superpowers are. Is it events? Is it time management? Is it booking? Is it social media? Is it sponsoring? Is it admin stuff? All the things that either you don't like to do or you're not that great at, because we can do a lot of things, but it may not be our superpower. But for those that actually like function in it really, really well, give them that position and let them play. It's amazing. You'd be surprised. So <clears throat> got your rider guys, got your team name, you've got your core values people are in place now it's time to collaborate take a screenshot all right so you have collaborated with the team and you should on these things what's your mantra right what's your vision statement do you have one have you thought about it do you think you need one you do i told you what my mantra is right the more people that you help to become successful, the more successful you'll become. I say it all the time. I'm speaking that into existence daily. My vision statement, it's a little lengthy, but the bottom line is that my, what I want to do, my vision, is to help women become a better version of themselves, to become the best version of themselves, right? Have that mamba mentality. I love that. That's my vision for my team. We also have a team verb. It's great. That team verb, it's, it's amazing. It's fantastic. Because listen, our verb last year was dominate. And I'm, listen, I talked to my coach, Sarah Klein, and I said, I want everyone to know who we are. I want everyone to know the zebras. I want everyone to want to be a zebra, to want to join our team. I need a billboard. Like I went over all those things. Super cool, right? And last year, we freaking dominated. Everyone knew our name. 
everyone learn who we are, how we love, how we lead, how we share, how we give. That was very, very important to me. Now this year we have a new one. The verb this year is execute. We hit that million and we're not gonna stop there. So now let's take all that we've learned, all that, you know, all the things that we took in and we shared last year, let's now develop a, a better plan. Let's strategize, let's shift some things, get some more structure and let's execute this. So now we can hit 2 million this year or more. I stay minimum 2 million, right? We have a team song. Last year, the team song was Go Get It by Mary Mary. If you know the gospel group, they're a gospel duo, right? So listen, it was great. They loved it. Every time that I went live on Team Tuesdays, I played that song and everybody was super excited and, you know, and all the things that it said in the song, it spoke to their spirit and it got them pumped. It got them amped up. Go get your blessing. You deserve it. It's yours. All of that, right? Our team song this year is called My Year because everyone talked about how they barely made it through last year and all the obstacles that they had to face. And they're like, next year is going to be my year. So I started looking for a song that would speak to that. And I found one and the lyrics are fabulous. <laughs> it's amazing, right? And so I will play that song every week on Tuesday before I start giving information at 8 p.m. on Central Standard Time for the entire year. And it, it gets in their spirit. They believe it, they walk in it and they begin to manifest the things that that song says right? New consultant orientations or one-on-ones, whatever you call them, we collaborate on those things. My trainers and I, that foundation, those ladies, we collaborate and see how we're going to execute that. Last year, we did it one way. This year, we're looking to do it a little differently. We got together last year, we restructured, you know, make streamlining things a little bit. So we collaborated on that. It's not just me. I might be the leader, but we, we make decisions together. You know, Chris knows that I run my team like a corporation because we're going to be we're going to be a multi well we already are a multi million dollar team. I can't do that by myself. I need women in place to support my vision, to align with me, and that's what we do, right? Monthly meetings, rallies, you need them. <clears throat> very very important. I don't care if one person shows up, you continue to do it. Um, my second year in business, I was doing uh, meetings and then, you know, I got a little discouraged when people weren't always showing up and I started thinking, maybe I should do it every other month or maybe I should do it every quarter. And one of the women that was attending my, my meetings that wasn't even a part of my direct team noticed something. She said, Angie, I noticed that when you meet every month, the girls are excited. They have momentum and they don't lose it. And she said, but when you started doing it every other month, I noticed that thing, there was a little shift. And I was like, you know what? You're right. I'm gonna do what Chris said. If one person shows up, I don't care. I'm gonna be consistent and every month we're gonna have a rally, a meeting, whatever you call it. So we do it. Social gatherings are super important, extremely important. Listen, we're always bringing the fun to everybody else where your girls wanna have fun too. It keeps them fun. It keeps them connected. It, it develops that bond. And so I know things are a little, you know, with the whole pandemic and we can't do a lot of the things that we could do before. Hopefully that will change soon, but get creative. Find out who whose superpower is creativity. Whose superpower is, you know, they want to do the events and all the fun things and all that stuff. Who are those people? We've done things like lip sync battles online. We've done Club Zebra. We're, this month, we're gonna do a makeup tutorial on Zoom. We have girls on our team that are really good at doing makeup. So we're gonna all play in makeup and we're gonna stream live onto Facebook. You know how much fun that's gonna be and how that's gonna you know, draw us even closer to one another? And when we could get together physically, we did things like sip and paint and pole dancing. And I mean, we, we just did all the things. Do all the things to develop that bond with your team. It's going to take you far. Partners in business, I love this. Listen, connect with your, your team members' partners. Who is their support system? Um, what we did year before last, and I would have done it again last year, but the pandemic, is that we actually, my husband and I, we planned a dinner for my, um, my foundational girls, my ride or dies, my trainers, you know, those ladies that actually run, keep this train moving and we cooked for them we invited them to our home we rented tables and chairs made a very elaborate affair and we waited on them we served them we heard them we listened to their partners share how they met um, share what they thought of the business how they helped their partner it was amazing make those connections partners in business it's so amazing and listen 
Building trust, build relationships, a culture of family. Always show appreciation, take nothing for granted. Get a screenshot of this, it's important. Stay humble, reward positive behavior, create opportunities for others to shine. I touched on that, right? Involve them in decisions. Let them know that they're valued. Let them know that, it's so important, right? <clears throat> Always make sure, this is the culture of a family. These things right here, so make sure you get a screenshot. All right, so where do, <laughs> Where do you want to lead the team? <clears throat> You've got to have that down, your goals. If you don't have goals written down, you're definitely behind the eight ball. You got to have that. Uh, I use something called the diamond effect that really helps the team to grow. So um, we created group chats because we know Facebook is not allowing us to be great these days or as great as we can be. So in these group chats, in our team money train, uh, it, it develops this culture because you have people contained in one space so like diamonds, right, you, you put them, you know, you add the heat, you, the pressure builds, right? And you have these diamonds. So I'll just tell you about our 60 day newbie chat. So 60 day newbie chat, newbies go into this group for 60 days. That way they have immediate access to people. And when someone messages in there, we can see it immediately, right? So there are slow starters. And then there are those that come off gung ho, they're ready to go and they're doing all the things, yes? But then you have those that are not doing that. So they kind of apply pressure to those that are not doing all the things. And they get them excited. They get them riled up when they say, oh, I've added so such and such amount of people to my VIP team. Oh, I got a new person. Someone just joined my team. Oh, I just booked another party. That builds excitement. It's the heat. They're heating things up in that group. And, and, and women start to want that. They start to believe that they can do it if they didn't believe it before. So they're applying pressure to those people. And before you know it, there's a bond that happens between those people and the heat gets turned up, the pressure builds and boom, you have this explosion of women that are now excited and ready and working their business. And then also having them contained in those groups also keeps us from even having to do a lot, a lot of the times. Because the girls that have been in that group for 30 days already, when the new girls come in and they have the same questions that the other girls had, those girls that have been in their 30 days can now teach them and give them that information. It's pretty cool. All right. Okay. So um, create programs that continually develop leaders. Like Chris has the Future Leader Program. I developed a program of my own, um, you know, that's called the Elite Lifestyle Earners Program, where I coach you know, emerging leaders, those that I see potential in that are going to be huge in business. And I dedicate time to them and I've developed a program to help them, right? To help them to reach those goals a lot faster. If you want that information, feel free to message me. Um, I do have a document that I can send you. Um, and then as far as the money train, oh my gosh, if you don't have one, please get one. It's super fantastic. It is amazing. Um, and this is why the money train works. If you don't know what a money train is, is it is a leads group. So I think the first time I heard about this was from Abigail Mosqueda, but I never tapped into it until last year when I heard Leanne Rhodes talk about it at our um, um, success strategy, I forget the name of it, right? Six, something like that, right? SSW, bam. And so I went and did it. It's all of our team putting all of our leads into one Facebook group. And we all run that. We share inspirational posts. We share the latest kit sales. We share um, testimonials about people, the rock star report, all the different things. So what happens is you may have a girl that has thought about the business, but she doesn't get off the fence and join because she just doesn't see the value because she doesn't identify with you. But if she's in this group of all these other women, she's going to connect with someone. She's going to see someone that looks like her, someone that, you know, is, is a mom, you know, where maybe she's a mom and maybe you aren't. She's going to see that college student. Maybe she's got a bunch of debt. Like She's going to connect with someone that's going to make her say, wow, this person's like me. If they can do this and be successful, so can I. Oh, I want in. It's an amazing, amazing thing. And so if you want details on that as well, I can definitely share that with you also, because we also do giveaways and things like that. It's really a fabulous program. And a lot of people in, the, in our organization are doing it now. All right, so um, hand holding, why? Have compassion. Corporate does it for us. Should we not be willing to do it for the women that we've invited to be empowered by us? Yeah, we want people to move at our pace and do the things that we do, but it's not realistic. You're a leader for a reason. You're at the level that you are for a reason. 
And as much as we want people to want it as bad as we do and to go after it as hard as we do, it's not always going to happen when we want it to happen. And for some people, it won't happen at all. Why do we lose team members? Falling apart. So many reasons. Remember, there's always three girls coming in and always three girls going out. Life happens to the best of us and everyone deals differently. So understand that even your rock stars can wake up one day and decide to leave the business. Ultimately, you're not responsible for that. So we lose them for many different reasons. They become overwhelmed sometimes, right? Um, also, they lack partner spousal support. It happened to my rock star. Feelings of being used and abandoned. Do you only reach out to them when it's time to place an order? That's not gonna go over so well, not continuously, right? Are you never available for them when they need your help? They're gonna find it somewhere or they're going to leave, okay? Team and life drama. Everybody doesn't like drama. Those are things that make people leave. Frustration, it's just not fun anymore. What's going on in their life and in their business that's making it not fun anymore? If we don't find out what that is and help them, they're gonna leave, right? They're just not cut out to be a business owner. That's, listen, that's the case for some people. It is what it is. And those people, maybe you can't help and they leave and that's okay. Keep sharing the opportunity. You are not responsible for anyone's success or failure. I need you to know that and believe that in your heart of hearts, right? How can you improve retention? Ask yourself these questions. Get a screenshot. We're almost done. I don't want you to miss it. I'm speeding up here so I can get it all in for you. Why am I in this business? Ask yourself. Beyond the money, what's my mission, my vision, my purpose? What is it? Do I represent the core values I've set in place? Because if you're telling your team to be one way and do one thing and you're not doing that yourself, they're going to be looking at you sideways and they're going to be like, mm -mm. she's not practicing what she preaches. I'm not following her. Do you represent those core values? Think about it. Do I encourage and support team growth by providing strategies and incentives for them to promote to higher levels and positions of prestige? If you don't know how to do that and what that looks like, watch all the things. Live, love, win. The Wednesday webinars. Um, get on our YouTube channels. There's so many great classes that are recorded that you can learn all of these things from how to actually put those things in motion, all right? Never allow bad mouthing of anyone on your team. This is so super important. I can't tell you, I can't stress it enough. Respect, respect, respect. Your leaders and trainers are the first to come under attack as they are seen and heard the most. Protect the front line. You know, listen, no sponsor bashing. I don't care what the circumstance is. Respect, honor, and revere those that have come before you. Avoid negativity at all costs. I'm going to give you an example of what I mean by bad mouthing a sponsor. Um, a consultant comes to you with a complaint about another sponsor and what they do and what they don't do, blah, blah, blah. Then they begin to tell you how awesome you are and they want to learn from you and they want to be a part of your team. And it feels great to be loved, but be careful not to take on that praise at someone else's expense. Always lead that person back to their sponsor and encourage them to be the change that they want to see. I've had people come to me over the years and try to talk about someone and say, oh, how wonderful your team is and I want to be a part of your team. I've always led them back to their sponsor and explained to them not to judge their sponsor so harshly. Everybody didn't get into this business to become a leader. It just kind of happened. So give them some grace and help them. They can learn from you too. Be the change that you want to see. You're the leader. It's on you. You didn't pick leadership. It picked you. You're called for this. Break out of your shell. You have what it takes. You were born with it. It's in you. A seed. Water it. Embrace it. Invest in your success. Study leadership. Read books, watch videos, listen to podcasts, create your leadership brand, then live that brand every day. Make a massively positive impact on your team. Love your team. Pour into your team. Lead them. They don't want a manager, they want a leader, a heroic figure, a role model. Be that. Build a championship team. See the potential in every person. Pull it out of them. Coach them, inspire them, teach them, 
Demand excellence from them. And all along the way, be the example. You set the tone. You cast the vision. You bring the attitude, effort, and energy. So start moving. No regrets. They will follow you. Make the culture your number one priority. It's your performance environment. It's what provides the energy and passion needed to fulfill your plan and achieve your mission. To make your vision a reality. If you invest in the culture, the performance will follow. Championship leaders build championship teams that drive championship performance. Focus on the culture and execution of your team in order to capture the dream. You're the leader. It's on you. So hopefully in this class, you have learned three important tools a leader can possess. CPP, strategies in selecting a team name, how to create team culture, core values, ways to identify leader potential, and how to improve retention. So ladies, thank you so much for joining me for this class. I really hope that these things resonated with you and that it's gonna help you to grow and become a better leader. And if you have doubts about yourself and, and leading, it's a huge responsibility, but guess what? Just like that video said, it, you didn't choose leadership, it chose you. I didn't choose it. People have told me all my life that I belong in leadership and it hasn't been easy. And sometimes you feel like you don't wanna do it and it doesn't feel rewarding all the time, but trust me, you're here for a reason. So ladies, it's on you. Have a great day.